Joe Peregrine. 15. Then T minus 10. Nine. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We have ignition. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond.
coming up to the end of boost phase. Approximately 10 seconds to Biko. Throttle down in preparation for Biko. We've completed boost phase chill down. And we have cutoff. Coming up on Vulcan Centaur separation. We have Vulcan Centaur separation. Everything looking good. Coming up on the Centaur phase. And experiencing a bit of data loss here. We've recovered the data. Looks like the Centaur engines are up and running normally. Good steady state pressure. And we've just jettisoned the payload fairing. Two good brake wires. Good steady state operating levels on the Centaur mains. Two good engines. Gone to open loop control on Centaur PU. This is Vulcan Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes 57 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Rob Gannon confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, main engine cutoff, will occur in about 10 minutes. While we wait, I'm joined by Amanda Bichetti, ULA Director of Vehicle Upgrades. Uh, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us, and I know it's still early, but congratulations. Thank you, you as well, <laughs> this is amazing. How did it feel to watch the Vulcan rocket lift off for the first time? Oh, just absolutely amazing. I didn't expect it to be the way it was, it just, my heart is still pounding, it was excellent, and just, I'm so proud of all the work that the team did to get where we are today. Absolutely, and developing a new rocket is an enormous endeavor, of which you were a huge part. Um, again, we're still early, but how do you imagine the whole Vulcan team is feeling right now? I, I feel like they have to be the same way, you know, smile ear to ear. I know the team is at all our sites, friends and family. They've been supporting us for many years to get to where we are, so I'm sure they are jumping up and down just like me. It's been amazing. How is the Vulcan rocket going to change the industry? Yeah, that's a great question. So Vulcan is very much based on our heritage rockets, the Delta IV and Atlas V vehicles, but we've brought in a lot of new innovation and capabilities that are going to allow us to even better support our warfighters, exploration, as well as connecting the world. And the great thing about Vulcan is it's highly versatile, meaning we can use that vehicle to do anything we want, allows for affordability for anybody who needs access to space. Absolutely. And so this is the first certification flight. What are the next steps for Vulcan after this? Yeah, so with the, the first flight, we are well under the way from a certification perspective. We do have a second flight that we'll need to do here later this year. Once that complete get completed, we'll have about two months or so of post-flight data testing. And then at that point, we will be certified um, by the, the U.S. Space Force, and we will be ready to fly all of their important payloads for them. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll let you get back and uh, watch the next mission Excellent. events. Congratulations again. Thanks, you too. Coming up on 500 seconds into the mission, everything's looking good. Continuing to burn Centaur. Body rates right as expected. Steady acceleration, just under half a G. And we are now 235 miles in altitude, 836 miles downrange, traveling at 11,150 miles per hour. Continuously nominal performance from Centaur. Approaching the uh, halfway point of this first burn of Centaur, everything looks good. We're now 1,000 miles downrange, traveling at 11,500 miles per hour.
This is Vulcan Mission Control at T plus 10 minutes 7 seconds. Our next event, main engine cutoff, will occur in about 5 minutes. While we wait, I'm joined by Eric Monda, part of ULA's mission design team. Eric, thanks for joining us. Hi, Anna, thank you for having me. Of course, so we're still pretty early in this flight today, but can you tell us how the data is looking so far? Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to say that it was so exciting. I, I ran outside so I could watch this thing lift off, and that was so cool after so many years of development to, uh, to watch this thing fly. That was fantastic. Absolutely, I bet. Yeah. So um, what is the data showing us so far? Yeah, absolutely. So I've had a very quick look. Uh, obviously, we're very early in the flight still, uh, but I've taken a look at the SRB performance as well as the booster performance so far, and everything looks just spot on, just perfect. Um, you know, fortunately, we've had a lot of these systems on Atlas and Delta for a long time, and so we've had a lot of flight data to anchor our models, and everything is lining up just like we would expect. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the audience has seen us switch from this live view of the launch from our rocket cam to this uh, animated representation of the vehicle in space. Can you talk a little bit about why we make that switch and how this visual is populated? Yeah, absolutely. So when we first lift off, we have a feed directly from the uh, cameras that are on the uh, rocket back to the launch site here. And so with that, we can get the video feed that we need in order to provide those images. As we get further downrange and we go over the horizon, we no longer have that direct link. And so we rely on NASA's teeter system to send telemetry from the vehicle back down to us on the ground. In that telemetry data, we get information like position and attitude and velocity. And so we use that to drive the animations you see here. Okay, so we're looking at real data, what's happening, it's just a graphic of it instead of the real thing. That's exactly right, yes. Awesome, that's really cool. So, you know, today we have, right now we're in the first of three Centaur burns. Can you talk a little bit about why we need three burns and how we use those three burns to c complete our mission today? Yeah, absolutely. So the first burn uh, performs our injection into low Earth orbit. Unfortunately, if we just continue that burn from that point in time, we wouldn't necessarily be aligned uh, with where we need to be in order to get to the moon. So what we do after we get to low Earth orbit is we shut those engines down, we coast around until we get to the right spot to do that, and then we light those engines up again. 